very key theme right now. Commodity is doing very well, and that's on the back of a weaker dollar. But what about the supply and demand picture? What are you reading into these moves? Yeah, look, I think um, it was initially given a little bit of a boost when Bernanke back in March said he saw uh, green shoots. Um, and then it was uh, you know, a well-known factor that the Chinese were big participants in the market, uh, stockpiling, um, you know, after having wound down stockpiles pretty aggressively last year. So it was more along the lines of get these commodities while they're still cheap. Um, so there was a big um, demand um, from China specifically. And Bulletin alluded to this in their results saying, yeah, they saw, but more importantly for me was at the same time where China's demand just started to taper off, and it is tapering off, um, returning to levels that Marius Klopp is the chief of Bulletin calls more normal levels, um, the developed world is starting to catch up. So you're starting to see demand. But interestingly, um, you know, the oil price is at a level where perhaps people are starting to question whether or not it's the right price. Now, as you know, markets are supposed to be pretty efficient and get the price right all the time. Now, I think uh, where this comes from is people perhaps saying, OK, well, the supply side is, is full um, and the demand side still looks a little bit weak. But we were discussing in the office the other day about some of these recent oil fines. Um, maybe take the one from Uganda aside, although we can explore that one a little. They're really deep. Um, the one found by BP is, is something like 11 kilometers underneath the surface. So you have to go through two kilometers of sea and then nine kilometers of ground just to get there. Uh, and they equated it to like putting somebody on the moon in order to be able to extract this oil. So what you're saying that cheap oil is just not out there at this stage when you look at the kind of fines that we've been seeing? Well, I think all the cheap oil has been found. Mm. So all the expensive oil now needs to be found. So the market needs to compensate for uh, what's going to be more expensive somewhere down the line. So interestingly, we're living in an age where you see at motor shows hybrids, and you're starting to see more and more hybrids. Uh, there's a motor show at the moment in Europe, I think the Frankfurt Auto Show, and the big push and the big theme is hybrids. But I think the combustion engine is still here to stay. So while people are talking about emissions controls and um, electric vehicles and trying to come up with the right formula and, and make it economically uh, feasible for the motor companies, we're still going to be big consumers of oil because there are these big new entrants to the market. Now, oil is currently at $71 around there, and it's been dancing around that $70 mark for some time. And you mentioned what is the fair price for oil? What do you think the fair price for oil is right now, considering that demand is relatively tapered off? We know that China, as you mentioned, has been restocking, and that is also coming off slightly. On the other end, we keep hearing that crude inventories in the U.S. are just not doing that well either. Well, let me put let me let me answer the question this way. Um, this year in China, they're expected to sell about twelve and a half million motor vehicles. Now, you must remember it's a relatively immature market, and in the U.S., they're only expected to sell ten million. Rewind ten years, and we're looking at a completely different picture. And this is on the back of some relatively well, let's not say relatively very weak U.S. Um, auto demand. So the fact that there are new entrants to the market, and we're talking about big populations, um, outside of the BRICS, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, we're talking about populations like Indonesia, even in Africa. And I think the push with uh, low-cost motor vehicles, you can even see it on our roads here. You see a new entrants into the market who, who are buying cherries and geelies. You know, these are names you wouldn't have heard of 10 years ago. But it's pretty much like the South Korean story where 20 years ago a Kia or a Hyundai, you wouldn't hear about it, but they're fast growing brands simply because they're understanding what the new consumer wants. Mm. You mentioned hybrids and you said the combustion engine is probably here to stay. Uh, just taking a look at the notion of a hybrid, of course, uh, the whole thing about clean, cleaner energy and greener energy, uh, platinum, the prospects for that, because obviously that's quite entrenched in, in that notion. Yeah, well, half of platinum usage currently and, and quite a fair proportion, in fact, more palladium usage goes into auto cats. Now, I think you, you mustn't be duped into the fact that I think it's just combustion engines because it does have other technological usages, hydrogen fuel cells. Um, but I think more importantly, inside of the cracking process in the petroleum industry. So if there's going to be more oil demand um, going into the future, 
I think the predictions are by 2030 that we would use about 130 million barrels of oil a day. Now, obviously, uh, we'll probably find half the motor vehicles on the road by that time will probably be hybrids or some sort of version. I think the, the usage will always be there. The fair price for oil is the one that's set in the market. And you can call the price, you know, I can say, oh, it should be 50 or it should be 100. The thing I know is the great thing about the commodity oil is you refine it, you stick it in your tank, you blast it out the back, and it's gone. We've got gold at an eight and month high. We've got platinum at $1,348 an ounce. So that's also rallied quite a lot. Oil is doing well. Copper is also on the rise. Just taking a look at the gains across the board on the commodities front, do you think that it's warranted? And I know you keep saying that uh, markets are efficient, the fair price is set in the market at this stage, but uh, do you think that perhaps we are setting ourselves up for a little bit of disappointment <coughs> considering that a lot of things have run ahead of themselves and this is what most analysts have been saying? Well, that's a great thing about markets, you always set yourself up for <laughs> disappointment. I think, um, I think ultimately it's, it's more a function of um, where you see the future uh, panning out. Um, if you say to yourself, well, you know, many of these commodities you use up and then it's quite difficult to recycle, et cetera, or they just get, say for instance, you know, we lived in China and, um, you know, you had to, you, 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 someone built me a house and then I moved to the city and, and it just a, a fact aside from that, there are more people in urban areas as of last year than rural areas. So I think that trend is here to stay. So once you've moved in, you need a motorbike, you need a fridge, you need a TV. So all these things require raw commodities. So I'm comfortable that one of our biggest holdings in our portfolio is BHP Billiton, because I think they're going to benefit from this trend over the next decade and a half, two decades.